Hey guys, welcome back to another video on C-Sharp Collection series. This will be a detailed video on the most common and the most important C-Sharp Collection, the list. We will start by learning how to create a list and then go ahead and see all mostly used properties and functions available in it. We will be using lambda expressions here and there. If you want to brush up your knowledge on lambda expression, then do watch my detailed video on this. You can find the link in the description. So with this, let's get started. List, as I mentioned in my previous video, is one of the most common collection. The primary benefit of list is when it is filled, it gets resized dynamically and it is all done behind the scene so that you can keep adding items to the list without bothering about its size. If you want to know how list does this, then please do watch my previous video where I have explained the difference between array and list and I have explained in detail how list does this. Now let's see how to create a list. You can create a list by giving the keyword list and then the data type. You can create a list of anything, a value types like int. You just new up the list of T constructor and you pass in the data type of the data that you want the list to hold. Then you can add the data of the given data type. Let's create a list of reference type. For that, let me create a class called customer. Now let's create a list of customer. Now you can add your customers to this list. As I mentioned, you can create list of anything. So you can even create a list of delegate. So it means literally you can have a list of anything in C sharp. Let's see one by one all the properties and methods exist in list. For that, let me create a list of a string. Let's add a couple of data. You can add it like this within curly bracket. This is basically adding data using initialization syntax. If you know upfront what to be added, then this syntax can help you at least reduce couple of lines of code. Now, let's say if you have an existing collection like this, then you can add this collection to the list directly. The only condition is that the existing collection should be of type I enumerable, like this array. So in this case, this is an array of CTs and you can populate your list with this array. Something like this. Now your list contains the cities. However, in most cases, you don't populate list like this. You add elements to a list using its add method. Something like this. Now since you already had two elements in the list, which were in index 0 and 1, by the way, similar to array, list also starts with zero index. Now with addition of one more element, Mumbai gets added to next index, that's two. Let's print the content. To loop through the list, you can of course use the regular for each loop or for loop but list itself contains a method called for each, which is quite handy. Let's use it. So our list LST cities dot for each and we have to pass in a delegate. So X lambda expression and let's print each item. As I have mentioned in the very beginning, if you're not aware of lambda expression, then please do watch my video on this. This is indeed a very important concept used everywhere nowadays. Now, how can you determine the size of this list? 
You can do this by a property called count. This tells you the number of items in the list. If your list is already populated like this, and say you want to straight away add another existing list to it, can you do that? Yes, for that we have a method called add range. Let's declare one more list. Let's add one item to it. Now let's add this list to our cities list. LST cities dot add range our existing list. Let's print it. Now we have four items in the list. Say you want to access the second item. How can you do that? Similar to array, you can definitely use index notation. So first item will be in zero index and second item in one index. So first item at zero index and second item will be at index one. Let's print it. Now, can you change this indexing? Ideally not. But if you want to insert an item in between the list, the indexing changes. Like, let's insert a new city in index 1. So, our array dot insert the index where you want to insert and the city name that you want to insert. It basically pushes the index of our 1th item to the next and inserts the current item to that index. But in case if one position is not available in the list, then it will throw the famous index out of range exception. There is another method insert range. I think what it does is very intuitive. It will insert a range of items starting from the given index. Please try out that yourself. Now let's try to remove few items from the list. For that, you have to use remove method. Elasticities.remove and the item. Let's say New York. This will remove the first New York that appears in the list. If you want to remove all the new work from the collection, then use remove all method. But you can see, you have to pass a predicate. That's a delegate. To see remove all, let's add one more Boston to the list. See, we have two Boston now. Let's remove all the Boston from the list. So list dot remove all city so this is basically a condition which says remove all the cities that is equal to boston let's print and see it should remove all the boston see we do not have any boston in the list now you have other remove methods like remove at which takes an index and removes the item in that index and you have another method Remove range that takes the starting index and number of items you want to remove from that index. Needless to say, if the index is not available, it will throw index out of range exception. Please do try out yourself. Now let's see how to check if a particular item is available in the list or not. For that, use contains method. Let's say I want to check if Boston and Munich is available in the list or not. If it contains, it will return true and if not, then false. If you wish to find the index of elements in the list, then there are methods like index of, last index of, find index, find last index. Let's see index of method. So it will give you the index of first occurrence of Munich in the given list. Similarly, 
you have last index of. It gives the last occurrence of Munich in the given list. You have another method find index. Let's see that. See, it also finds an index, but it takes a predicate. Means we can give a condition here. So find index basically searches for an element that matches the condition defined by the predicate and gives back the index of the first occurrence. Similarly, we have find last index, which returns the index of the last occurrence. There are other methods like find, find all. Let's see one of them. So find method also takes a predicate, means it searches for an element that matches the condition defined by the specified predicate and returns the first occurrence within the entire list. Similarly, find all retrieves all the elements that matches the condition defined by the specified predicate. Okay, now I would like to show you a few real-time use cases using list so that you can really understand how lists are used in the real-time applications. For that, I'm going to use this XML data. You can treat this as some kind of repository like a database or a text file. This is indeed a simple XML with few customer data like name, ID, age, city, is new property which tells the customer is new and has not done any shopping. But before implementing the use cases, let me read the XML in a list. In the interest of time, I have already implemented the reading code. So I have this customer class here. This hold all the customer data from the XML. And this customer data method basically reads my customer XML. I am loading the XML here and then running a loop to populate all the customers. Let me call this in our main method. I am taking the customer ID as an input from the user. Okay, so let's see the first use case. The first use case says, check if the incoming customer is valid or not. Let's implement. For that, use exist method. So our list customers dot exist and the condition where we check if the given customer ID is equal to any of the ID in the customer list. Let's print a message. So if customer is valid, then get the name and print a message stating the given customer is a valid customer. And if the ID does not exist in the list, then our else block will hit and not a valid customer message will get printed. Let's run it and see. Let's give the customer ID as one. One is available in our XML. And that's Mr. John. Cool. We get the message saying John is a valid customer. If you give something else which is not available in the list, then it says not a valid customer. So this is working fine. Let's take another use case. The next use case is you have to write a small logic for an online shopping site to verify if the incoming customer is eligible for discount or not. The criteria is, if all the customers in the XML is new, then the first incoming customer should be given discount. So for that, just do this. Just a message in the beginning. If the user wants to check the discount eligibility, if yes, then we write the main logic. our customer list dot true for all then the condition that is is new property true for all that's it let's run it since is new property is true for all the customers in the list so the given customer should be eligible yes that's correct 
Let's take an another use case. Say the eligibility criteria has changed. Now all the customers should get discount whose age is greater than 40 and city equal to Boston. Not a problem. Let me write the logic in the beginning of the program. What I'm doing here is I'm finding all the customers whose age is greater than 40 and who lives in Boston. In the XML, John and William has age greater than 40 and they both lives in Boston. Let me run and see if I get the same result. Perfect. Okay, let's write our final use case. This is to display all the customer names in ascending order. For that, just write our list that's customers dot order by and then the condition that we want to order by name. By default, order by orders the list in ascending order. Let me run this. See, you get the names in ascending order. If you want in descending order, then just write order by descending. And you get the list in descending order. I have tried to cover all the mostly used properties and methods of list and also few use cases, but there are still a lot many. But I guess if you have really understood what we have discussed, then as and when you need, you can easily learn others. That's all for this video. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe the channel and drop in your comments for all the future videos on G-Sharp and other technologies. Thanks.